Hi, it's Danielle from the blog warmwithtime.com where I help you design a home full of vintage charm and in today's video, I'll be sharing how to use milk paint on furniture. This video will be a complete beginner's guide and a step-by-step -step process of how to use milk paint and I'll be demonstrating it on this beautiful vintage dresser that I'll have in my master bedroom. So I get it, milk paint is completely different than any other type of paint. It's really strange, it comes in this powder form, you might need to add a bonding agent, and it's unpredictable. So it's completely understandable if you're a beginner to milk paint and you're very intimidated by the process. That's why I'm making this video today to help you understand the step-by-step -step process of milk paint to make your first experience with milk paint as easy as possible. But just know that paint is not permanent. You never can completely destroy a piece just using paint, I promise. All you have to do is sand it down and then repaint. That's it, paint is not permanent. So do not let the stress of using a new type of paint prevent you from actually getting started with milk paint. It is totally worth it. So I hope that today's tutorial encourages you to give it a try. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so step number one to using milk paint is to make any repairs that you need to on your piece of furniture. So I like to make repairs before I prep my piece in step two, because sometimes with the repair process, you might need to be sanding down wood filler or adding glue to things, and that can make your piece dirty and dusty. So I like to do repairs first and foremost. So some common repairs that you might need to make on your piece might include peeling veneer or chipping veneer. There might be an entire section of veneer that's peeling off. Maybe you're just missing a tiny little chunk or it might have drawers that are sticking. They won't glide properly or maybe the drawer is completely broken altogether. You might have holes and scrapes and gouges that you need to fill or you might have some missing trim and appliques. In this particular dresser that I'm be painting today, I don't have any repairs that I need to make, which is pretty unusual. Um, but if you do need to make any repairs to your piece, be sure to check out my vintage furniture makeover playlist to see how I address all of these types of common repairs. Okay, so step number two is to go ahead and prep your piece. Thankfully, milk paint is a little to no prep paint. So there's not a lot of prep work that needs to be done before you actually go ahead and get started with painting, but you do need to do a couple of small things. The first one is cleaning your piece. So I like to clean my piece with Dawn dish soap. So I just take a warm water, a couple squirts of like a degreasing dish soap, and I just get an old rag and literally wipe down the piece. I find that Dawn is very gentle, yet effective. So it's not as harsh as other chemical products where you need to go outside and use a respirator, you need gloves to protect yourself from some of the harsh chemicals in the product. But also, uh, degreasing dish soaps are really good about really getting the piece free of any oils, grime, and residue. They kind of break up the grease, just like in your dishes. So it works well for furniture prepping. So all you need to do is just wipe it down. Now that I've wiped the piece down with Dawn, now I'm going to dump this bowl of dirty dish soap and replace it with clean water and then just wipe it down one more time just to remove any of the dish soap residue left on the piece before we actually get started with painting. Okay, so the next step to prepping your piece is potentially sanding down the finish. So if your finish is really shiny, meaning that you can sort of see your reflection in the piece, it has a lot of glare and shine, then you might want to consider sanding down the piece lightly before you go ahead and get started with painting. This sanding process should not take more than five to 10 minutes. You're not trying to remove the finish. All you're trying to do is sort of add tooth or simply something for the paint to grip onto. In the case of my piece, it's not very shiny. I would consider the finish pretty dull. 
it, so I, there's no need for me to go ahead and sand it down. But if you do need to sand your piece, just use about a 100 to 120 grit sandpaper, something sort of in that medium range to just sand the whole piece by hand. I like to use a sanding block and just lightly sand everything down. That really shouldn't take you very long, just like five to 10 minutes, especially for a piece this size, I would think five minutes would be more than enough. And this will really make sure, especially with milk paint, that the paint has something to grip onto. Okay, so the next step to how to use milk paint is to go ahead and mix up your paint. So authentic milk paint comes in a powder form and therefore it needs to be mixed before you go ahead and get started. If you see any product at the store that's already a liquid form and already pre-mixed and it calls itself a milk paint, just know that that paint might still be fine, but it's not gonna give you the same results as a true powdered form milk paint would. So we need to go ahead and mix it up and I like to only just mix up the milk paint that I'm gonna use for my particular project and I only mix up enough for one coat. So the reason you wanna mix up milk paint into small batches is because milk paint does not contain the same additives as traditional modern paints. And therefore, after a couple of hours of being mixed up, the paint will start to gel up and be basically unusable. You can delay this by putting it in the fridge, but I personally just find that even in the fridge, once it comes out, it can still be hard and kind of gel up. So I just mix up what I'm gonna use for one coat of my piece. And I would rather err on the side of I needed to mix more paint than mixing too much because then I might waste the paint. So to mix milk paint, all you need to do is mix it with a one to one ratio of powder to water. And in today's video, I'll be mixing up this color called Aviary by Miss Mustard Seed. When you're mixing milk paint, you want to use a one-to-one -one ratio of the milk paint powder to warm water. It's important to know that this is just a rule of thumb. It's not always going to be the case. You might find that you need to add a little bit more water, a little bit more powder, depending on like the environmental factors of your area. If it's a really hot day, you might not need as much water. If your area is very dry, you might need even more water than the one-to-one -one ratio. So this is a half a cup of milk paint powder. And I'm gonna mix that with about half a cup of warm water. And I like to add my water to the powder because sometimes I find I don't need the full one-to-one -one ratio. describe this as sort of um, the consistency of a melted milkshake that's been sitting out for a couple of hours. It's, if you're painting a really big piece, you can use something called an immersion blender like this one that I picked up at Goodwill to actually stir in and blend up the paint a little bit quicker and easier. One that is plastic works the best because milk paint likes to stick to certain metals. Um, I usually only use the immersion blender if I'm mixing up a lot of paint because as you can see, just this small amount of this fork was easily able to mix everything up. So you don't need any special tools most of the time. Um, and even if you are mixing a lot of paint, you can use, use a whisk or a blender ball. You could even put the powder in some kind of jar with a lid and just shake it up. So it's really easy to mix up. So after we mixed it, we're just gonna let it sit for about five to 15 minutes to really make sure that the pigments in the paint have fully dissolved in the water. Okay, so once you've mixed up your milk paint and you're ready to get started with painting, now is the time to add any bonding agent that you need to before you go ahead and get started. So milk paint has the unique ability to chip and create this authentically time-worn finish. However, if your piece has a, a previous finish, meaning that it's been sealed with any kind of top coat and it's extremely shiny and slick, then you may wanna consider adding a bonding agent. Also, you might wanna add a bonding agent if you do not want your milk paint to chip whatsoever. The bonding agent will really make sure that the paint fully adheres to the piece and you don't have any chipping. So when it comes to adding bonding agent, you just wanna add whatever the manufacturer's instructions are to your paint just to the first coat of milk paint. For example, um, I've used been using this Sweet Pickens 
bonding agent. This is just a sample size bottle of bond and I mix up two parts of paint to one part bond. So I have a half a cup of milk paint here. I would just add half of the amount of bond to that. So a fourth of a cup of bond if I was gonna add bonding agent to this particular piece. But in my case, I don't find that this finish is, again, very shiny and slick. So there's no need for me to add bond. I'm okay if a couple pieces here and there chip. That's what I'm usually going for when I use the milk paint anyhow. Um, I do not expect a whole entire section of the paint to just chip all the way off like on the front of the drawer or anything because the finish is very old and dull. So now that I've removed the hardware, I'm ready to go ahead and get started with my first coat of paint. It's important to know that the first coat of paint is not going to look perfect. Normally it'll look really patchy and not so cute on the first one. Um, and as you add more paint, it will adhere better and start to look a lot, a lot better. But the first coat, don't be expect to be blown away. You actually might think that you're a terrible painter, but I promise that's just how the paint is sort of designed to work. It's going to look pretty bad on the first coat. dresser looks like after one coat of milk paint you can see that overall we have pretty high coverage but there are some areas that where the finish is not quite opaque normally when you're doing when you're using milk paint your first coat of paint is going to look a lot more streaky and dry and patchy than this particular piece does the reason why I have such high coverage and I can almost stop here is because that original finish was very, very dull and the paint was able to absorb fully into the wood and um, create one even coat. But I do still have some areas I'm gonna go back. When you do your first coat of paint and your piece does not look like this, just know that that's completely normal. On your first coat, you do not expect such high coverage. And once you add your second and third coats, you'll start to get more of an opaque finish. So now that I've waited for my piece to fully dry, it's been about an hour, hour and a half. Now I'm ready to go ahead and add my second coat of milk paint to my piece. I suspect this piece probably will only need two total coats, but it's totally normal for you to do three coats of milk paint um, just because milk paint consistency is so thin. like after two coats of milk paint on the second coat once it's dry that's when you're going to notice any cracking or flaking it's most likely to occur after that second coat has dried and I've went around and looked and I have no chipping or 
crackling in this piece it was pretty dry and because of that we didn't get any chipping that happens from time to time you never can be sure completely with milk paint so we didn't get any this time but that's okay our next step is to go ahead and smooth all the paint out fix any drips or runs any like little balls where the milk paint pigment didn't quite get dissolved in the water or just to finally add some distressing to buff everything out and get milk paint extremely buttery soft I like to use a 220 sandpaper and I'll basically um, use my orbital sander to actually go over the entire piece. But today I'm working inside and I just wanted, this is a small dresser so I can just do this by hand. And all I'm gonna do is just take my sandpaper and sand over all of the paint. And what I'm trying to do here is not actually like distress it with the 220 all i'm trying to do is smooth out all the paint just going to go over all the surface just to make it really buttery soft and smooth and then you can see like it'll have some variations in the color that'll get smoothed out when we go to add the sealer at the next step but just go ahead and go over the entire piece with the 220 or you can use higher grit if you have it on hand to go over the entire thing and really smooth out any drips runs and also make the milk paint buttery buttery soft i love the way milk paint feels when it's buffed out so so soft and i like to take my hand and feel across the piece i can feel where i've sanded and where i haven't just by touch and I like to just check it because I personally like my furniture to be really soft and smooth. So now that I've went through the entire piece and used my 220 grit sandpaper to really smooth out all of the paint, now you can go ahead and stop here if you don't want any distressing and just skip to step number six, which is sealing your piece. But in my case, I want to add a little bit of distressing, just a touch to this piece because we didn't get any cracking or chipping just to make sure it looks a little bit more authentically old. So I'm just gonna take a 120 grit sandpaper and go by hand to lightly sand. And when I distress, I'm just gonna go around the high areas of the piece. I'm not just gonna add um, a, a really weird section here, like it's in a flat area where there wouldn't naturally be wear, but around the edges, like at the top of the dresser, or maybe right here on this ridge section, this would be a good place to add a little distressing where we can start to make that wood peek through. So I'll just add a little distressing here. And I like to just do a little bit, I don't go crazy with it, because I don't want it to look overdone. And this will pop a little bit more once we actually add our sealer. So I'll just go around and lightly add a little bit of distressing here and there. And I try to keep it random. I don't want it to look like all of the edges and the entire piece are distressed. I just do here and there. So I added some here. Notice how there isn't any distressing right here. I'm not gonna add any there because I have a lot over here. Same thing up here. I might add a little bit of distressing around the top of the drawer. And oh, we got a lot right there. That's fine. But maybe we'll skip a little section and go over here. And you can add as much or as little distressing, obviously, as you like. That's kind of a personal preference. Again, for me, for this particular piece, I'm just gonna add a little bit here and there. Okay, so I'm all done with distressing. I've smoothed out my paint, and now the, paint, the milk paint is extremely buttery, soft, and smooth. One of my favorite things about milk paint the next step is actually the sixth step, final step, is to go ahead and seal the piece. So because milk paint is a porous paint, meaning that it has holes in the surface of the paint, you wanna make sure you seal the piece so that you can protect it against dirt, oils, and also make the surface wipeable. So you can use tons of different products to actually seal your piece, and which one you choose really depends on the durability that you need, as well as how much time and effort you have and also what products you have on hand but you could use a paste wax um, you could use an oil wax a, a water-based polyacrylic or a polyurethane 
Today I'm actually going to use a product called hemp oil. This is um, a hemp oil from Miss Mustard Seed. There's many makers of hemp oil. And I'm going to use this one today because it's very easy to apply. You just brush it on or wipe it on. It does not need to be reapplied over time like a paste wax. And I think it will even out some of the, the colorations in the paint as well as really give this blue dresser a beautiful rich color. So I'm going to go ahead and seal up this piece and it will be done. So to use hemp oil, all I do is I take my hemp oil and pour a little bit into a container. A little bit goes a long way so you don't need like a ton. And then I'm using a natural bristle brush to apply it. You could also just use a rag if that's all you have. And you really got to use some elbow grease with hemp oil. And you can really tell where I have where you put it on and where you haven't. So right here, you can tell I haven't applied any hemp oil. And as soon as I start to brush it on, you can see it really changes the color a lot and makes it a lot more rich. And I apply it in circular motions, but you're just trying your best to like really work it in the paint. Work it into all those pores to really protect it over time. And then after about a half hour, I'm going to go in and wipe away any excess hemp oil. And it might still be a little bit greasy to the touch for the first 24 hours. But after about 24 hours, it will set up and it will dry completely and you'll be good to go. So you can tell this is the hemp oil and over here is non hemp oil. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish everything else up and get this piece ready to go. So here's what it looks like after one coat of oil wax to the piece. You can do multiple coats of oil wax if you feel like you need a lot of durability. Um, but I'm just going to go with one for this piece because it's just a dresser. So it's not going to get a ton of abuse. I'm going to let it sit for about 20-30 minutes and then I'm going to buff everything in just to get any of that excess oil wax off the piece. You can see it's starting to dry in some areas more so than others and it is super super buttery soft and smooth and it also um, deepened the color quite a bit okay so now that it's been about 30 minutes since I applied the hemp oil I'm, I'm just gonna take a shop rag and go over the piece and just kind of pick up any excess oils that might be on here So now that all the hemp oil is fully buffed in, I'm going to go ahead and move it into the master bedroom, add the hardware, to, and, and I'll come back in about 24 hours and show you the final product and what it looks like in the space. So here is the finished dresser. It's been about 24 hours since I applied the hemp oil to the surface and you can see that it still has that beautiful matte sheen. I think it is absolutely stunning. Um, it looks great in my master bedroom. We still have a lot to do in here, but I think that by adding a vintage brass mirror above the dresser will help tie in with, to the brass chandelier that we have in here. So I really hope that today's tutorial encouraged you to give milk paint a try. I think that milk paint gives truly beautiful results that you just can't get with other types of paints. So I really hope that you give it a try for yourself. Let me know in the comments, do you have a vintage piece that you have planned to use milk paint on? I would love to hear more details in the comments below. If you're looking for more vintage furniture makeovers as well as milk paint tips and tricks videos, be sure to check out the rest of my channel. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye.